Welcome to Natives Histories here at AD Sound Lab. My name is Tony Wachiku. And for the next 35 minutes or so, we are with two wonderful DJ producers, Paula Temple, Rebecca. Give it up. Now, um, although I'm talking to them, um, it's also an opportunity for you to ask them some questions. So if you've got a question that you'd like to ask, have a think about that. And in about 15 minutes, I'll give you the opportunity to ask a question as well. Is that right? Yes. We'll get there. We'll get there. So, um, yes, yeah, great to see you again. Great to meet you. Um, the last time we were together, you were showing us crazy reactor patches in London which was really insp inspiring. Um, and, but since then, um, apart from obviously releasing records and DJing extensively, you've hooked up with a good friend, Rebecca. Um, and we've kind of got Exit Festival to thank for your kind of collaboration. So do you want to talk us through that, maybe? Yeah, we just got the uh, request for, for Exit um, to play, but they wanted us to do a back-to-back -back the first night. They always have back-to-back -back sessions. So... Paula and I were talking about um, possibly doing it about a year before, I think, or maybe, yeah, eight months or something at CrossFit. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah. so we go to CrossFit, CrossFit a lot, okay. yeah. Okay, so... Like, oh, would you consider back-to-back? -back? And I'm really like... So was this kind of like... Yeah. Rope, rope pulling. And then she got me at a weak yeah. moment. Okay. I was really... She gave me a double session. She I was yeah. beaten. <laughs> and I would agree to anything. Okay. Yeah, so... Yeah. <laughs> so we've got CrossFit to thank as well. Great. So I guess, you, I guess you've got, you know, mutual respect for... But did you know each other before CrossFit? Yeah. Yeah? Yeah. Um, I think we got to know each other um, well when I moved to Berlin. Mm -hmm. And actually, Rebecca was one of my first friends uh, in Berlin and really helping me out. Things like not having a studio space. And Rebecca would go, look, I'm out of town. Do you want to borrow my studio? Which is super generous. Yeah, and we developed our friendship uh, from there. And then she realized I was really unfit and told me to come to CrossFit. <laughs> That's not true. <laughs> so obviously the question is, are you fit now? No. <laughs> yeah, you gave up after yeah. about three months. <laughs> I stuck with it for three months. Then I started getting the muscles. Um, and then I think there was a, a bit of a, a busy touring time. So I think yeah. I had a month off. And it's really hard to get back into something that's hard in the first place, but back into it. And I'm like, nah, I'm too old. <laughs> hey, I think you just got a girlfriend and consequently married her. That's, yeah. that's what took you away. Yeah, there was that too. <laughs> yeah. Um, well, we've all got, you know, huge commitments, you know, and obviously playing together and DJing together and working together is obviously part of, part of it. So, so... For Exit Festival, um, did you have to prepare beforehand or was it just a case of a standard back-to-back, -back, which is basically, you know, um, okay, what are you going to play, when you play? You know, obviously there's some prep involved, perhaps. Yeah, we had, a, we had the first session um, mixing at the studio and just to work it out what we was going to do and how it was going to work. We do have slightly different sounds when it comes to uh, the techno that we like individually so it was how that would work and obviously we're both layering a lot of sounds and, and loops and tracks together so playing just one track each doesn't really make much sense so we we allocated like a certain amount of time or a certain amount of tracks to play okay. and then we swap over um, but we did about three or four sessions or was it more like six I can't remember <laughs> you like a good practice session yeah we just enjoyed actually getting to know each other's way of doing things, um, and, you know, and, and our choice of technology, you know, is is, is because we like to um, keep it very very busy and layered. Um, you know, so a lot, lot of stuff going on, um, but also we we like to create our own moments. So we then learned, you know what it would mean as a back-to-back, -back, how much time we want to give each other so we can create those moments. Sure. Um, and testing, you know, d d different ways to do it. And then it was like, no, this, is, this will be the right way. The yeah. It all sounds really civil. I like it. It all sounds very civil and well thought out. We're going to unpick that in a second. So obviously the idea of back-to-back -back is one thing because you're both using different technologies and have different aesthetics around techno. So there's lots of kind of learning each other's is involved. So 
in terms of the setup, how did you, how did that work? Put, bring it together because you're a tractor background, right? So yeah. So then, and your what's your setup? Uh, my setup's with Ableton Live, mm -hmm. um, with with controllers. Yep. Mm -hmm. yeah. So two computers, right? Yeah. yeah. Okay. And how how do you link them with Link? With Link. Okay. Yeah, link really, is your friend. Really easy. Yeah, Ethernet, not Wi-Fi. Ethernet. Okay. Yeah. Cool. So yours is tractor. What else have you got? Um, I have two X1s, one F1 with, with effects, and a TR8, Roland TR8. <clears throat> and yours Ableton, which can push to? Yeah, push yeah. to, mm -hmm. and uh, Alan and Heave K2. Yeah, cool. Okay, nice one. So I guess it was a case of, so it was your studio, right? You have rucksack, <laughs> plonk, need a bigger table. Yeah? yeah? Long That's table. Fit. Okay. So did, you, so did it... Um, in terms of, yeah, so talk us through what that was like setting up. Did you take the left hand side or the right hand side, or you know, what's it? How did it work out? Yeah, we, we, yeah, we figured out our favorite side, first of all. <laughs> it's very important because it's in the rider, obviously. So, mm. yeah, obviously, I'm the more flexible one. Uh, so, Rebecca's like, I have to do the right side. <laughs> it does okay, work. okay, it's yours. <laughs> yeah, my right is the trigger fingers. Yeah, okay. so. So there's a technical reason why you're in the right hand side. Yeah. Cool. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> muscle memory. Yeah. yeah of course. Um, so no muscle memory because I'm useless. <laughs> no, not at all. You're useless in other things, perhaps CrossFit, but maybe not. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> so we've got the left and right thing sorted out. We've got the technology sorted out. We've got the syncing sorted out. Um, I want to kind of unpick the the back to back nature of your playing. You know, you've obviously got different styles. You agree to clock that. So I guess you're the more kind of in your face techno, no holes bound. Rebecca's not messing around techno. I think the way that I mix is probably more like traditionally as a DJ, that's why how I use Tractor. Um, Paula is very much on the planning side, so she has a lot of things prepared and planned and um she lo it's cut you do a lot of cutting not cutting with the bass out but you just swap tracks in and out which is really kind of like dave style really uh, um and um so i had to kind of adapt to that and and paula has a specific sound of kicks that she likes she has a there's like the low kick and then she's like a mid kick so i had to like work around her kicks okay. as okay. well tell us about your kicks I think it's become quite clear. I like a good kick. <laughs> yeah, so sometimes Rebecca looks at me and goes, how can I mix into that? That kick is going to kill me. Um, yeah, so I don't really think about it because I'm obsessed. I was, I was talking about it before, but 90% of my production time is, is working on kicks, um, which is a bit ridiculous. Um, yeah, quite an obsession. But yeah, I've got the best kicks though, so. Yeah. Kicks. No. yeah. Actually, I, I got out kicked. <laughs> I was in Trezor uh, a couple of weeks ago um, and I was playing with Ansem. So Ansem, yes. yeah, nice. he did a live set. Oh my God, I heard the best <laughs> kick of my life. So we're going to do a kick swap. <laughs> I think mean, I'm going to get off better, actually. He'll have to record his, his, his all modular set up, isn't it? From where, yeah, he's, no, he says he's, he's, on, he's yeah? put it in a sampler. Oh, yeah. okay. So um, I guess what's really good about this is that you've, you've really identified your niches, I guess, or your sound when it comes to DJing, and you give yourself, each other space, two or three tracks to kind of tell a story, and then it's over. So then how do you work out the transitions? How does that work out? Paula's more kinder with that. She, she'll leave me on a, a track, and then she'll tell me that it's just going to flow into beats, where I kind of... I'm a little bit meaner. I think I, I put the craziest record on and then I'm like, go on, your turn. And you're like, no, 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 no. And then I have to like put another one on. So, um, oh, sometimes I've got no chance. <laughs> She's like, right. Uh, and also as well, because my eyesight is, is, is not so great. So sometimes I have to look over when it's handover time, like, oh, right. Where's that breakdown coming? So luckily there is a visual display. And I'm like, okay. I'll, I'll, I'll wait for that breakdown. Or I'll do a really fast transition. Mm -hmm. Fuck that breakdown. <laughs> do you sound effects as well as part of your kind of collage of sounds that you're playing? Yeah, a little oh, bit, but yeah. not too much. Because I think in my early days, um, I went a bit crazy. 
clear the dance floor. So uh, I learned to do things in moderation at the right moment and sometimes go crazy, but in, in, in the right moment, sparsely. Yeah. So would you say when you, you know, play back to back, is it, what's the, is there an expectation? And what I mean by that? Is it, is it just, you know, you know what you're going to play, you've kind of got an idea what you're going to play and see, you know, and then give the crowd this experience? Or is it something a bit, a bit more experimental? Or is it just kind of, you don't know what you're going to do? You know, what, what kind of vibe is it when you're DJing together? Um, it's pretty, pretty much prepared. Um, we have the sections prepared and then we also have some, like a little backup folder of like stuff that we'd like to play and, and maybe it would work and then we generally see how each gig is kind of individual as well um and we but we do roughly have an idea like you know Rotterdam Rave we want it to go harder door was just next level insane um and um Neopart was more um deeper especially the first half um, so yeah, explored more of the classic techno and um, melodic stuff. Um, yeah, and then we built it up to the craziness. But, but you ever attempted to just go, you know, I'm going to put this cheeky one in here and just throw it off. Yes. You, th <laughs> you think I'm going to play track, but actually, no. Yeah, yeah so I, I think when I, I, I've kind of conditioned Rebecca into believing I'm going to be nice <laughs> and then sometimes, Sometimes, just once, in in the set somewhere, I'm like, bam, here you go, and she's like, what? <laughs> I remember, yeah, because the, the first one this year um, was at uh, Awakenings Festival, and then I, I I did this, I don't know, this hardcore chop up, and then handed it over to you, and we like the crowd reaction was like, what? Rebecca's reaction was, whoa! And even different, I didn't... For different reasons, right? <laughs> <laughs> and even I didn't expect it to be that big of a sound. Yeah, yeah. I was like, over to you. <laughs> and I guess, are you, how do you take these curveballs? Do you take them with open arms, or are you kind of like, okay, I'm going to get my inner, I'm going to get my, my own back? Yeah, I think... Yeah, I, I think it, I, I, that's the part that I really enjoy the most, like preparing... And going through the motions of playing the same mixes is it, it's good, it's solid, you know, it works. But for me as a performer and you know, I want to be entertained as well. So I'd really enjoy those moments. That they're the highlights for us, I think. And do you I'll ask both of you, do you think um, you know, when you play, you know, your, when it's your own DJ set, is there a personality that comes through when you play yourself as opposed to playing back to back? So yeah, yeah. I, I think by myself, I'm, I'm pretty serious. Um, uh, I mean, we d we decided actually we we're just going to have fun. That was the most important um, part of this: is fun to the max, and it really reflects in in the in the style uh, that we do. So we, we we do pick some of the craziest, hardest rave tracks that even I wouldn't like feel comfortable playing by myself. But I go. You know, this is this is stupid, crazy vocal line and this hardcore B. I love it. This is a great moment to play it. Um, yeah, so it is much more fun. We decided that's how it's going to be. Yeah, and I think that's what makes it special: the the, um, the dancing and being with the crowd as well. And I think they enjoy seeing us having fun because a lot of the time we've got our heads in our laptops. So. Um, we wanted to get that across. Like, we're not always so serious and geeky. Yeah. <laughs> There's lots of time for that too as well. Cool. Over to you guys. What are you guys thinking? You'd like to question, you'd like to ask? Question in front here. Hi, guys. Uh, first, thank you so much for last night's set. That was something unbelievable. And my question is around the production side of things. Are you guys, have you ever, like, spoken about or planned on, on like, collaborate, collaborations of productions? Uh, we've talked about it, but it's just never the right time. Um, I was working on my album. Paula's been working on her album. And, um, yeah, it'd be something maybe in, like, a few years' time. But right now, we've got our own personal projects solo. Thanks. Cool. Nice one. Anyone else? Okay, mesmerise. That's fine. <laughs> That's okay. You can be mesmerised. But part, part of the question. So... Um, has it ever gone wrong? 
like technically. <laughs> yes. <laughs> yeah. Um, I mean, the first back to back we did was exit, totally fine, and that was a year ago. Um, and then this year, the first one was awakenings. Um, first time ever, my laptop decided to my. It just crashed, just as we were about to start. Yeah, and and my project file completely corrupted. So one, of the, one of those ones. Yeah. So then nobody knew. Rebecca starts um, doing the first ten minutes, and I'm just like dancing. Well, holy shit, holy shit, get this to work, get this to work. And the thing's spinning. I'm like, oh my god, really? Forever? Let's just pretend everything's fine. And then. You know, it, it, it comes up, um, thanks to Link, I'm in, and then I'm ready to take over. Yeah, so that, that was our first this year. One of the advantages of playing back-to-back, -back, of course. Yeah. So did you use it as an opportunity to really get your, your time in? Yeah, I think I wasn't meant to start that on that set. That was your, you were doing the open on that one. So, um, so I had to just figure out what to play straight away and, and just run with it. Um, the next time that it was like a user error that we had as well. I just forgot the cable. And I've done that twice now. And the first time was at Neopop, but we were really lucky because uh, we managed to get... And it, it's not the cable, the Ethernet cable, like everyone's got an Ethernet cable. It's the, the adapters right, okay. to Ethernet to Thunderbolt. That's really tricky and they're expensive. Super expensive, yeah. yeah. Um, but uh, yeah, Gustavo sorted us out, promoter. Yeah. Then in Dublin, yeah. <laughs> yeah, forgot again. But actually, we had the backup from Neopop, okay. and I was meant to take that, so we both forgot a cable. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so it's like, oh my god, it's so stupid. Yeah, no, it's great. It's just, it's actually, you know, considering how you know, te you know, DJing, performing, you know, yes, it is about celebration, but there's a lot of seriousness to it right particularly if you've prepared a lot and you know you've got a lot of you're very dedicated but it's really great to hear that you're having fun with this collaboration you know um and um have you is there any kind of um what's next in terms of how you're working together you're going to take it a stage further i mean we asked about productions but in terms of your djing is there something else you want to explore in terms of how you work together how you interact perhaps using more equipment or perhaps using your voice on stage or something yeah, I mean, we we haven't really um, reflected yet because we just did our, our last um, back to back last last night. But we wanted to like reflect on what we've done so far, and there are things like expanding. Um, Rebecca is thinking about expanding with a, a modular setup, um, and I'm exploring like um, you know, a new drum machine that I really like that I want to start bringing in more and more. So there's definitely like chance to expand. Um, so it, it's just again it's going from season to season like figuring out what other stuff that's going on too um, but definitely want to be doing more stuff in the future and the direction you're going in terms of the contrasting styles is that something you're going to keep going or because it feels to me that that's like a that's a thing that's a Rebecca and Paula thing yeah I think um, that's what people really enjoy about it like I think that having that the the different styles within one set I think we we've done something special like something good there because yeah. that's the, the feedback we get they're like oh we really like both of your styles when it comes together so I think we do have to keep working on it and then maybe for the future like full live I always say that you can do a live set but if there's two of you doing a live set you're going to get so much more like two, four hands are better than two so um, yeah to see yeah <clears throat> um I want to unpick your track to um, set up a little bit more. Um, are you into the whole four deck thing? Do you play tracks? And you know, how do you curate your, your tracks uh, set? I just have loads of cue points and I just move around the cue points. Um, I was playing a lot of like four tracks, um, but I've kind of stepped back from that a little bit. So it's normally like two, three, um, and I'm just trying to select tracks that are actually really you know, like really strong. And I think that's what I got from the from our back to back. You know, Paula's really good at picking really good records that are great on their own. And then that made me step my game up a little bit more, like to, to see what I was looking for in a record. Um so I've been not 
layering as many, and just letting things breathe a little bit. Um, and I don't really loop things too much. I like the, the movement. If the record's good, it has movement, then you need that on the dance floor. So. And as for your, what's your curation style in terms of tracks and audio and not so many effects nowadays? I don't know. I mean, it's a, it's the same thing that there, there has to be um, a flow. But I do think of a set as, as a journey. Um, it's, it's not to be the same constant energy, um, and you know there has to be contrast. That I, I am a bit overkill on the breakdowns. I think <laughs> it's like this breakdown's going on forever, <laughs> and I can see Rebecca behind me getting impatient. <laughs> like when's it going to drop? When's it going to drop? I just, let's just wait, 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 wait. Um, so yeah, so sometimes I cut the breakdowns down a bit um, for you. <laughs> I don't know, but it, but it makes sense um, sure, course, picking up the energy. Yeah. So yeah, I, I, I'm, I'm very conscious about um, contrast. Um, so what I want sometimes to take the mood somewhere completely different and then swing it back into something surprisingly, you know, the power needs to surprise sometimes oh, sure. to catch people, you know, off guard that it hasn't come in at the moment they expected. Mm. Um, and I think those are the, the magic moments um, that really wake people up and feel alive. So apart from those moments and obviously what you learn from each other um, and obviously DJing, what are the, obviously the highlights of, of the collaboration that you've created I just had so much fun. It's, it's been, it's just been great and relaxing and fun. That's yeah, for I, me. I've really enjoyed the the practice sessions. You know, like when I was younger, we'd always have friends around and we'd be mixing and uh, you know it's at, at home. And the older you get and the more professional you get, the the more solo and you know that those experiences are. So when Paula, I remember the first day she came over and got us the set up and we were just like rocking out in the studio and I was like oh my gosh we need to do an all-nighter of this like that that's totally my addict side like we need to do this all the time more 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 um but I really enjoyed that it was like you know sharing music once again and um and and just enjoying it enjoying dancing listening to another DJ and an artist and that that for me was like the shows are great but the that little connection that we have Really, really lovely. All right. What are you saying, people? Question? Thoughts? There you go. There's a question in the back there. It's a very important question. <laughs> Apart from the long track standard one. We just have uh, a bucket on stage. <laughs> no, we, we, we do our best to offload before <laughs> and if we uh, we haven't we just have to hold it in uh, <laughs> but you could obviously just give more time right I mean, this is a very yeah, important but we've question. not we've not had that situation really no i mean like when you when you do an all night long session and dave will um agree here for some reason you can do six hours and you just don't go to the toilet it's like all your concentration is like holding everything in or you just sweat it out. I don't know. <laughs> mm. <laughs> Thank you for that question. Uh -huh. Go for it. Mm. No, thank you. It's important. I would love to know like, what's your uh, favourite artist, uh, like non-electronic uh, artist. Who's your favourite non-electronic artist? <laughs> I don't know. I'm, I'm, I'm a huge... huge f fan of my friend's band called Esben and the Witch. Um, so it's a bit like a gothy rock band. So, but I mean, there's a lot of artists, but at the moment I'm listening to a lot of Esben and the Witch. Rebecca? I've, I'm still listening to all my teenage stuff like Nirvana and um, recently Lana Del Rey. I just, I love her. And uh, Ben Howard, I think, like, yeah, just stuff, lots of music with vocals, funnily enough. <laughs> um, so, yeah, I'm really into that stuff. Yeah. 
on a related subject, um, given that you have this opportunity to have fun and you know collaborate on stage, have you thought of including other music forms or textures into your set? Um, <clears throat> I do, I do my solo stuff, and when I do like like a full live set, um, it tends to be not really dance floor orientated at all. It's it's um, more like a cinematic, apocalyptic experience. So yeah, there's there's tons of soundscape, noise, um, and plenty of invitation to make you all deaf. Um, we'll just give you the deep rumbles. Um, so I, I I love to make I, I I think I'm a sound designer really first above everything else. Um, so it is nice to do like a full life set sometimes and and bring all my sound design together. So some in some sets in my solo sets, like there's um, there's an event I do once a year called Catharsis, um, and that I bring a lot of sound design into that. Um, but um, really. The, the, the club sets and festival sets is not really for that. There's no space for that. Yeah. It's about form and function. Yeah. Would you agree? Yeah. Strictly about the loud kicks and noise. But it's, it's kind of seasonal, like coming out of the festival season now and then taking it back into the clubs. Um, it's really strange. It's like, it, it's almost like I don't want to do all the really hard stuff and thinking about you know what's going to work again in a dark club and you kind of have to do a bit of a shake-up of your record collection is it really that night and day in terms of i mean you both talked about that, that the festival season and the club sense what is it for those who don't know what that means what does that mean aesthetically in terms of music and i think more like textures and and grooves rather than um you know breakdowns and just big moments I think you still need them in a club set, of course, but it's like maybe for me, it, it's stripping those away, and then, and then, I don't know, like and, and then mixing slightly different as well. So is it much more of one kind of energy and one kind of experience, Jeremy, rather than it being peaks and troughs? I'm trying to for festivals. Yeah, I think I, mm -hmm. I think so. You still go up and down, but it, it's just everything is just bigger. Okay. It seems like that. That's what I really learned from from working with Paula. Is like what really works on a on a, a big stage. We played with another DJ recently, and there was no breakdowns. And I could just coming into the room, one of the room, the stage, realizing that actually they need a breakdown. And the the age, dif like the age, like the demographic is different as well. So festivals does attract a lot of younger people and they kind of need the 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 energy and the breakdowns and and whereas the thing in the clubs people want to get lost a little bit more interesting no i'm just i'm just smiling on that i just so you obviously bring this thinking to your sets i guess you know so part of your pre-production is thinking about okay this festival season has to have this kind of energy, this kind of tempo. Less breakdowns, please, madam. And then <laughs> that kind of thing, right? Is that a tough one? So you have to be that strategic when it comes to preparing your sets. I mean, you don't have to. I mean, as long as I think, as long as it's true to yourself, you know. Like, I think that I'm, I have a wide range. Paula has a wide range of music that she really likes too. You know the. We've been around since the 90s, so we've gone through lots of different, like, subgenres, And it would... I don't know, it's like trying to fit everything in. And I, and I think that, for me, is always exciting. It's like, how can you fit everything into one set and make it work, uh, rather than I'm going to just play the same record in over and over. Um, but I just... Yeah, I think, I think it's now it's like a learning curve when you get to the bigger stages to see what works and what doesn't. And um, and you have got to think about that, the people's experience too on the dance floor. And then how much of it is um, art, as in you're presenting this collaboration and this kind of philosophy on stage, and how much of it is, you know, not pleasing the crowd, but you get my point, how much has to respond to, to the space that you're in, whether it's a dance floor, whether it's a club night, or a festival? 
<clears throat> I think with the, the back-to-backs and with them being festival bookings, the, it feels like a celebration together, that we are really close together and, and celebrating together. Um, and I, th- I think for, for, for uh, some club experiences... Um, it's, 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 yeah, it's, it's to give a, a version of, of, of yourself. And yeah, I may mean something unique that they w- won't have experienced from another DJ, that this is my interpretation of, 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 of techno, and some people will be into that and some people won't. Um, so, uh, yeah. I think there's the, the, there's a like a difference. So the, the clubs for me is a bit more um, I don't know of an not education uh, experience, but to to give something um, pretty unique. Yeah. All right. Um, go for it, mate. I think, I think now is a really good time for female artists to come through. Um, there's a lot of emphasis on females in the industry. Um, and I think it ranges from the top tier right down. I mean, I, I'm really interested in some of the girls that are fully modular right now. So there's a girl in Berlin called Wallace. There's the lady modular. Um, and they're really exciting because they're really, you know, getting into production. And... Um, I mean, you've got a whole list. Of <laughs> it's like, how long have you got? <laughs> There's just, just many that are blowing my mind. Um, I'm really impressed with Dr. Rubenstein. She actually got me interested in acid. I never liked acid before. And this year, I'm like, oh, I like acid. Uh, <laughs> um, there's Renata from Beirut. Um, amazing industrial uh, techno. I mean... She, I don't know how she's finding the, this amazing industrial music that I've never heard of before, but she's finding it, and the way she delivers an industrial set was the best I ever heard. That was, I was telling everyone, um, I know, you've got to book this person. Um, so, yeah, th- you know, th- there's, 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 th- there's many, but there's two examples, for example. Thank you. Anyone else? Cool question here. So in terms of other other you know elements, so lighting, you know, pyrotechnics, is that also a collaboration, but not so it's not so public? It was really hot last night. Oh my god! We we one minute into a set and all the pyrotechnics were going off. We didn't expect it, and so that like, wow, it's hot in here. I'm going bright red, and we're being filmed. This is not cool. I'm sweating, and I, I touched your back, and you were pouring with sweat. <laughs> No toilet, remember. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> so we have no, no control, actually. And we, we didn't actually think to make suggestions or go, you can't do this or we need this. Um, it probably would have been wise to have that conversation. Um, but I think things worked out pretty well. I think on the big stages, the lighting guys and, and girls, are, they're just responding to the music. So, you know, they're professional, they're, they're doing a big stage, so they're, they're obviously professionals in the game. Yeah, and what's been nice, actually, I think nearly every time the, the lighting guy um, or, or girl comes up to us afterwards and goes, I really enjoyed uh, doing, doing the lights for you. That, that was really good fun. Yeah. Anyone else? Okay. So what's next for... You too. Collaboration-wise and perhaps individually. Collaboration, it's, that's it for now, unfortunately. Um, Why? I, so we, we've got <laughs> our, our own stuff going on at the moment. I mean, I've, I've just finished an album, 
Um, so I've just got to say, yeah, I know. <laughs> Took a long enough, but uh, <laughs> now I hate it. <laughs> of course, of course, it's like <laughs> I'm gonna bin it. <laughs> Start again. Um, no, so now I need to think. Well, what what the hell am I going to do with it? Um, I'll, I'll not bin it. Uh, no. We won't allow you. I'll to make do you that. all suffer. <laughs> Um, yeah, so I think I need to give that the time it needs. Um, yeah, and okay. I've just, I've got absolutely no music coming out after November, so I'm a little bit worried. Um, but I've just or spent a lot more time doing a live set, so I have my first live set tonight. Um, there's going to be lots of mistakes, <laughs> but I have my open and start open and close. Sorry, so. And that bit's sorted. Um, and yeah, I think I think I want to start working on another album, but um, yeah, just see. I'm just going to see after tonight what I want to do. Maybe roll out the live set for next year or um, or not. Well, Paula, Rebecca, thank you so much. It's been great.